Dennis in uh, New Jersey is a first time caller. Dennis, thanks for calling, man. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, um, I know that you don't uh, get involved with hypothetical things like that or even deal with the past, and I'm not even that type of person either. I like to deal with the present and hopefully build things in the present that will affect my future in a positive way. However, while I was uh, watching your show or listening to your show, uh, something came to mind that I thought would be an interesting topic. Like, uh, I was thinking, like, what if black people were Africans, right? And the role was reversed. Like, imagine black people uh, got on boats, uh, got, got on the ocean, uh, rolled up into Europe, right, and bought or enslaved you, right, or enslaved your ancestors, right? Yeah. Right? And even if your ancestors sold you out, right, like, not for either for slavery or even bought you, and then Africans bought you to the United States and told you that you had to uh, assimilate to an African culture of, you know, voodoo or something or some other religion and told you you had to work for, you know, Africans for uh, a couple hundred years. And then after, you know, we decide to finally allow you to be free as an, uh, as an American citizen, um, then how would you feel after all those years? Would you do you think you would feel like uh, uh, connected to Africans, or would you have animosity towards Africans if they had done that to your ancestors? I don't know what how I would feel or how it would be. I I know that I remember the only thing that I can relate to this with is when I was in school, grade school, elementary learning about the uh, Japanese were the enemies of Americans in the World War II. And I remember turning around to my, my best friend, who was Japanese, half Japanese, at the time, and I, like, held up my fist. <laughs> but I was, like, playful about it because I had no real connection to it because I, I didn't live that, you know? And my parents didn't raise me in that culture of oh, these Japanese did this to you, they were the, the enemies, you know? So I didn't, I can't really relate to it. I was, I was brought up learning about God, Christianity, and nothing about, very little about what other people, how other people have done t- to me or about me. So I think that it's yeah, it depends on how, it, would, it would depend on how I was raised, I think if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's like um, uh, how a lot of African Americans or Black people in America probably feel similar to you, where is they'll they'll try to you know uh, uh, pit things in, in perspective as far as how their parents raised them in an environment that they grew up in. Yeah, but when you look at the um, the the plight or the um, situation that African Americans uh, seem to be in, where, you know, you and um, your your other uh, colleague, Jesse Lee Peterson, says that, you know, they have a lot of hate or anger in the system, and right. you wonder, like, if those, if that hate and that anger uh, is associated with them feeling wronged or some way. Yeah. And somehow ingrained in their DNA or ingrained in their culture that they're feeling a certain way, and it's, and it's, and it's hard for them to get over that hump. I think uh, let bygones be bygones, you know? I think it's definitely in, uh, like I just described, like it's in the way that they're raised. Like they're raised to believe in, to bring up, like bringing up slavery and all that stuff is as important to them, slavery and Jim Crow and racism and like bringing up, believing in that, that racism is real is almost as important to, to being black nowadays, which it didn't used to be, as believing in the Holocaust is to the Jews. The Jews, whether they're religious or not, they believe in the Holocaust. That's very central to their Jewish identity right now. Um, according to some study that I saw that was put out by real Vincent James. Uh, so they're, they believe in the Holocaust and they want to remember the Holocaust and never forget and never again. So... The Jews and the blacks both have this identity and culture of bringing this past wrong up 
and remembering it and thinking that it's it still has something to do with today and going to happen again and stuff like that. So I think that's that's what's that's what the where the anger is coming from. These past this past stuff from history is an excuse for the anger that they're raised in, uh, but it's not it's the source like, of their anger. Yeah, it's almost like they're bringing up past trauma. Yeah. Like you're, they're pitting themselves through that pain again by keep bringing it up, you know? And it's imaginary trauma because they didn't actually go through it, so they don't actually know what it's like to go firsthand. You can read all about it, and maybe all everything that you read is factual, but you don't you didn't go through it firsthand, so it's not an actual trauma that you've been through. It's just a an imagination thing. Because right. I, w- I definitely you know, wouldn't want to be a, a slave. I, I wouldn't necessarily want to be a slave master. I wouldn't want to get beaten. I wouldn't want to get gas chambered or put in a camp or moved, a- moved away from my house or what anything like that, you know? Or separated forcefully from my family. I wouldn't want any of that stuff to happen. But I, that stuff has never happened to me, you know? Only what's actually happened in my life has actually happened. But people who are angry are in their imaginations, you know? They're, in their, they're holding a grudge, which is unrighteous and unwise, and messing with their, their own lives. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like a Napoleon, Napoleon complex, like a small man complex, where you got a... Uh, Try to buck up to the uh, the bigger bully, so to speak. You know, what because what do you mean? Like Explain. So well, like I right, say, if I, I if and subconsciously I think that you're stronger than me, that you're more important than me, and I feel like um, to make myself to uh, justify myself as a human being, I, I feel that I have to show courage, or I have to uh, 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 be angry or, or fight you, so yeah. that I can you know. Uh, I don't know the word, I, the word escapes me right now, so that I can feel that, you know, I'm just a stronger hero, you know? That makes a lot of sense. Um, right. Anger is, is like oh, an inferior emotion type of thing, and so you try to make the other person angry, or you try to intimidate them. You see that with women a lot of times. They don't have, like, a natural authority sometimes. They want to tell you to do something, you don't do it, and so they get mad and then you do it because you don't know how to deal with them when they're mad, right? Or something. That's like right. a, it's like a false, it's like a false power. They think that anger will give them a power or a strength or a determination to overcome something. But it's really just going to s- pull them deeper into hell. They will get some stuff yeah. done. You can get stuff done with that energy that comes from anger, but it's a dark, evil energy. Yeah, it it always uh, turns out in the in the negative. If yeah. it starts out negative, it ends up negative. So even if it goes positive, then it ends negative. You know. Yeah, I, know. I mean, you can you can achieve. Uh, there's a whole lot of evil people who've come up with great inventions, built great societies, maybe, uh, sort of, successful in a in a worldly sense. But it's it's uh, underneath it. It's they're not at peace. Right. And yeah. they're not spreading good in the world. <laughs> like, look at Facebook and all, the, and, and all these uh, companies that are... They're great companies, but they're, uh, they're spreading evil in the world because the people who run them are a mess. And the people who are on them, too, are a mess. Human nature's an evil. Yeah. Interesting. Think, uh, human beings. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I said I think human beings, like the Bible said, I think human beings are naturally evil. And For sure. They, to, uh, and to become human, they have to get out of their nature. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I have to get past that. That's why the, you know, you brought up the, the blacks in America. I think them being encouraged to be angry is a total disservice to them. You know, the people who take up, who pretend like they're taking up, or in their minds they, they're taking up for black people by recognizing Black History Month and recognizing racism and how whites have done them wrong and still do them wrong. That's doing a disservice to them because you're turning them into victims who, who can't help themselves 
and victims oftentimes become perpetrators, and that's why you see crime going out of control and the woman-headed households and all that stuff. It's all out of order. Yeah, it's true, because I've noticed like a lot of uh, black immigrants from other countries, they'll come to the America and have, you know, loads of success yep. because they don't have that, you know, that slavery mentality. Yeah. You know, so and you can you can assume by them being, uh, you know, the same race of people with the same DNA or similar DNA that they're you're as a black American, you should be just as capable as them of success in the capitalist um, country. That's so true. Immigrants. I hate to admit this, but it's true. They are some of the biggest time go getters whether they're honest or dishonest, they chase opportunities that many both white and black uh, and, and Hispanic and some of the Asians who were born here from generations, uh, people, they don't take those opportunities because they're spoiled and they don't see the opportunities and they're just resting and com- living their comfortable uh, lower middle class or middle class lives, if you will. I, I don't like that term, middle class, but... Have you noticed that the immigrants are go-getters because they appreciate the opportunities and they chase and they chase them, even if they're dishonest yeah. about it? Yeah, I believe that they, you know, they're more go-getters. But I think that they're forced kind of to be a go-getter. Yeah, being that because they're an outsider, yep. they have to make a way for themselves because they don't have, you know, uh, the blanket or the security blanket of the United States to give them welfare and other. Yeah. Uh, or, or their parents they have to make, make it happen, yeah. Yeah, and their parents yeah, their can't parents just take care of them either. So it's like, yep. Yeah, it's like a, it's almost like a survival mechanism that switches over in, a, in their psychology. Yeah, and makes them, you know, go go go, almost like similar like to like the, a lion, you know, hunting in the uh, savanna. Oh know? yeah, he's going to, he's going to get that gazelle by any means necessary. True. Man, great call, Dennis. Okay, great call. Appreciate hearing from you, man. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye.